By the end of the Second Cronus War, the foul banner of the word bearers flew across the entire planet. The very Earth cracked with the foul energies unleashed there. Warp storms racked the sky, and demons spread across the land. Where once a prosperous colony had stood, a foul demon world burned like a canker in the void. Black cathedrals rose in all its cities, and the entire population either converted to the blasphemous faith of chaos undivided, or became fodder for its blood sacrifices. The loss of a single world and a few hundred million souls would soon pale in comparison to Eliphaz's next acts, however. Soon after his final victory on Cronus, the sorcerers called forth legions of demons and other foul beasts, while Chaos fleets appeared from the warp. Cronus became the launching point for a campaign of conquest that would cut through much of Ultima Segmentum as it drove toward Holy Terra itself. The war for Cronus was but the dawn of the Imperium's darkest day. The alien mind is strange and mysterious, and Farseer Taldir proved this once again upon her conquest of Cronus. The Eldar had broken all who stood before them, driving back men, alien, and heretics alike. Cronus was theirs. However, instead of securing their hold on the world, or enacting some final gambit, they simply vanished like the ghosts of legend. The Eldar returned to their ship, the Vision of Liliath, which evaded all attempts to track its exit from the Cronus system. Taldir left behind her a planet in anarchy, littered with the corpses of her enemies, and destined to become a lawless backwater for centuries to come. Perhaps that had been her intention all along. Perhaps Cronus itself and the warlords who might have arisen there were the threat Taldir had long foreseen and finally defeated. The truth, like the Farseer's ultimate fate, remains a mystery. With the last alien bastion broken, Governor Militant Alexander stood as the uncontested ruler of Cronus, and a hero to his men. Even faced with the opposition of the Blood Ravens, the Governor carried out his orders and received his rewards. Indeed, Segmentum Command ordered the Liberators to remain on Cronus during a pacification period and then to ship out to the next conflict zone. Governor Alexander would remain behind to rule in the God Emperor's name. Large numbers of tech priests arrived on Cronus to oversee a massive campaign of public works, bringing with them the huge resources needed. In return, they gained permission to resume study of the Hellstorm Cannon in Victory Bay, hoping to return it to the Emperor's service. As for the Liberators, Governor Alexander promoted Captain Vash to Colonel and placed him in command. With the regiment still loyal to him, a planet at his command, and the Tech Priests of Mars in his debt, Lucas Alexander had begun his rise as a power to be reckoned with in this sector of the galaxy. By the end of the Dark Crusade, Cronus was a tomb world once more. Just as the marching Necron armies cut down all their opponents, so did other fiendish devices work on the planet's very ecosystem. Scarab swarms scoured the lush jungles of the south, 
and the fertile plains of the north, while pulses of loathsome energy killed even microscopic bacteria. The seas died, and the air itself became rarefied and poisoned. Soon, sterile sand and dust swept across the Cranusian landscape, broken only by black monuments to the Nightbringer. Cronus became the black heart of the Necron Purge in the eastern edge of the galaxy. Warriors emerging from the monoliths of Cronus would bring death to worlds across the Tau Empire, the domains of Ultramar, and many more sectors. Imperial strike fleets, Tau battle formations, and Eldar raiding teams would all try to retake Cronus only to fall before the huge crypt vessels protecting the tomb world from orbit. Each heroic effort only added more deaths to the Nightbringer's tally. With the last enemy beaten, Gorgut's horde reigns supreme on Cronus. The Warlord had draped himself in the cruel glory of the Orcs, being hailed as the Headhunter, the Rage Streamer, the Blood Spiller, the Death Killer, the Daemon Killer, the Gun Smasher, and the Ghost Killer. The Orcish Horde proceeded to pillage the planet to build their next invasion fleet. Gorguts himself set off at the head of that fleet, but Cronus remained an orc-infested world. And the Warlord regularly returned there to gather forces for his next conquest. With such a fertile base of operations, the Warlord would cut a swath through the Imperium's eastern fringe and the Tau Empire for years to come. After many long and bloody battles, the Blood Ravens finally completed their purge of the planet Cronus. The battle barge Litany of Fury remained in close orbit, imposing a strict prohibition on any visits to the world, while the 5th Company maintained the Castellum Incorruptus in North Vandia. The Imperial Guard Segmentum Command lodged protest for the Blood Ravens' actions, reporting them to the Inquisition. The Blood Ravens successfully defended their actions, convincing their interrogators that General Alexander should have bowed to the Blood Ravens' orders and withdrawn. Nevertheless, the Inquisition kept a watchful eye on the chapter, for the rumors of hoarded relics never fully abated. Likewise, many in the Guard's command structure never forgot the blood shed on Cronus. And indeed, the darkest time in the chapter's history began soon after the war's end. With the last enemy stronghold broken, the Tau hold on Cronus became secure once again. The task force sent from the Tau homeworld remained on the planet to secure it, and soon thereafter, further waves of settlers and colonists arrived from across the Empire. The humans left on Cronus found life increasingly difficult for them. Many had embraced the Imperial return, and now found themselves subject to re-education or other penalties. Intensive colonization by Tao and Krut led to a rapid demographic swing, with the human population dwindling to less than 5% a decade after the Dark Crusade. Although no public announcements were ever made to this effect, it seems clear that human births on Cronus also dropped precipitously. In part, this is due to the single-gender re-education camps imposed by the Tau. But it is also possible that the alien powers undertook some form of sterilization project, 
All for the so-called greater good. Whatever the truth. When Cronus was admitted as a full sept of the so-called Third Sphere, its human population was but a footnote.